Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is a second hand graphics card that I of course found on a very popular selling site. I have no idea what it is or what it's supposed to be but all I know is that it was advertised as a very capable 1080p gaming GPU. This tells me two things, either this is a very capable 1080p gaming GPU or it's so bad that the only way the seller could actually get rid of it was by lying and that they were relying on a fool to come along and purchase it. Judging by the lack of clarity regarding the specifications of this card, well I guess I'm that fool. I like to think that by buying cards like this I'm saving someone who isn't too knowledgeable with PC components from being disappointed or ripped off. Perhaps I'm being a bit negative, I mean we haven't even tested it yet. What we have here then is a pretty solid card with all the ports you'd expect to see including HDMI, VGA and DVI. VGA isn't something you usually find on modern cards so I'm guessing it's a good few years old. Now I didn't want to ruin the surprise myself so I swapped out my 1080 Ti for this card and Device Manager actually installed the 387.92 NVIDIA drivers automatically. Later versions caused issues when trying to auto update and without wanting to break this thing altogether I decided to run a few benchmark tests. Sorry about the recording today, my capture software also didn't like this card so we're off to a really good start. <laughs> I started off going easy on the card and to my surprise Fallout New Vegas defaulted to ultra high settings which, yeah I didn't imagine going well. Despite a few drops though, especially in busier town areas, we averaged 70 frames per second. Now I have a 75Hz display so the game will max out at 75fps whether VSync is on or off but we were getting pretty close to that target. The 1% and 0.1% lows however did let us down a bit and this is reflected in the frame time table. Still, things were okay overall. Skyrim Special Edition defaulted to high when I first fired it up though this proved inaccurate as we were only getting around 20 to 25 FPS as you can see from this scene here. I'm literally just standing still and the frame rate is dipping. The low preset is a better option and with our newfound frame rate I headed off to the nearby town of Riverwood to cause some carnage. I rushed in, took a swipe at Sven's head just for the fun of it and suddenly the whole town was after me. I stopped mid-combat to steal a healthy and nutritious cabbage and throughout the entirety of this ordeal the frame rate stayed very stable. Now I can't remember how much I paid exactly for this card but it was somewhere between 5 and £10 so yeah that's not really bad for the money. The Witcher 3 and its deceiving home menu were up next. The frame rate is always really high before jumping into the game and first time I tested this I was left really disappointed after realising that my graphics card absolutely tanked. I can't remember what hardware I was using at the time but here the same thing happened. As I ran through town I heard the screams of a local who I assume had also seen my sub 20 FPS frame rate. I was then welcomed by a charming peasant who watched on as I stuttered towards the shore. An open area would surely give us more frames right? Well we were now seeing closer to 25 FPS which isn't terrible but a lower resolution would definitely help out here. That being said I actually changed the resolution in game to 900p and then the game crashed to the desktop which was odd. I then tried starting again in 900p and it wouldn't. Uh, this took a change to 720p using the INI files to get back in the game but then it crashed again so the whole thing was quite weird. Uh, there was an occasion when I got it running at a lower resolution but the frame rate wasn't really that different uh, but you will be pushed over that line of playable bigger city areas like Novigrad for example though will probably cause many more issues. After giving me every warning imaginable, Red Dead Redemption 2 actually did start. The drivers were apparently out of date, my hardware was too weak and my graphics card didn't have enough VRAM according to Rockstar's launcher. Nonetheless, and despite having to keep the game at default settings, I hopped up onto my horse and began heading towards what looked like an interesting plume of smoke above the horizon. Now I love this game because there are so many random events, it's always hard to tell what's going to happen next. That was especially true here because I certainly didn't expect what I thought was smoke to turn into a mountain. Yeah, that's just one of the issues that uh, running the game at below minimum settings gives us. Again here, just like in The Witcher 3, you want to avoid those bigger town areas, you know, Saint-Denis and 
Valentine, for example, but that's sort of unavoidable in a way, not that we're getting playable frame rates anywhere else on the map, you know, here I was just riding around the wilderness, and even so, we were still seeing issues, so going near those busier town areas will make things significantly worse, I imagine, on the already struggling GPU. The latest spooky Fortnite update is out, and playing the game today really was a Fort nightmare. I expected ghosts and stuff, but trees that appear out of thin air and disappear just as fast, well, that's certainly a new one. It's fair to say that Fortnite does sometimes cause issues for a lot of older hardware or low amounts of VRAM, and after Red Dead I was expecting a lot worse, but the game still was somewhat playable with an average of 45 FPS. This was at 100% resolution scale as well, or 3D resolution, so there were no other compromises apart from the low preset. I also tried Crisis Remastered on this GPU, but that was when I got an error. Now I don't have any other games installed at the moment, I had to reinstall my Windows 10 operating system yesterday. I think some really old AMD drivers messed everything up, so yeah, I've installed a few and I'm continuing to do so today, so the game selection should be back to normal pretty soon. Now with all that said, I was actually quite surprised by the results from the games I did test today, especially Red Dead, because a lot of times it will refuse to boot with older drivers. So what exactly is this card? Well, it's a fake 750 Ti, which is actually a 550 Ti. Considering the low price I paid for this, I'm not really disappointed with the results. In fact, the VRAM was probably behind most of the issues as opposed to the card's actual hardware. If you find one of these advertised as a 750Ti, then don't buy it as it's not 750Ti as confirmed by GPU-Z and the actual GPU chip. If you know full well what you're buying, then you probably still shouldn't buy it because these flashed cards will sometimes have issues, but for what it is, I think I did okay for the price, though it's not very capable as described by any means. I think someone just wanted to get rid of this and they pretty much listed it for as cheap as possible in order to do so, so everything works. We tried a fake 1050 Ti, I think it was the other day, which turned out to be a GTS 450 and that certainly gave us more issues. In fact, this card, the fake 750 Ti, is actually more powerful than the 1050 Ti I tested the other day, because uh, this is a 550 Ti and that was a 450 GTS, so yeah, you'd think these, the people who make these fake cards would still make the better fake one more powerful, but I guess not. I guess there probably isn't much logic behind all of this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Take a look at some of the merch we've got at the official Random Gaming in HD store over on Teespring, if you like. We've got a couple new t-shirts and a few mugs as well. So, yeah, we're adding stuff all the time. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link down below. I think some of the stuff should pop up, pop up anyway above the comments. But, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one when I think we'll finally get around to checking out that Windows 98 gaming rig.